Hello everybody. I'm trying something different. I haven't done this for a while. I'm sitting at my vanity, which has become extremely cluttered. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought I'd do a little chat while I'm getting ready. Uh, some of the things that I normally do to prepare for my skin and my makeup and my hair a little bit for video. Um, I want to expand on some of the videos I've made recently about lonely people and ways that some people behave to get attention from others and how my working with Venus has actually helped me have some really deep understanding about this. Uh, I'm in my bedroom and I'm pretty sure my neighbors can hear me talking. So I'm going to come up close. Now I've made a couple videos on what I use for my skin care. Uh, I have renewed my license as an esthetician and I do still use the salon grade products that we were trained on in school. My picture of Oshun is over here. She is one of my uh, patronesses. And she loves it when I play with makeup. Um, and sometimes, like Jeffree Star has said, he gets called a clown. Um, it might look clownish. But when I was a teenager, I wanted to do avant-garde makeup. My grandmother was an artist. She was a painter. And then she had a... Um, antique store. So she just loved aesthetics. She always did her hair, she always put on powder and lipstick, and she was a Coca-Cola model at one point. So um, I have this serum that I put on when I get out of the shower, and it has the same ingredients that I used uh, for my son when he had eczema, and that is oatmeal, lactic acid, and in addition here is um, vitamin E. So this is a calming serum. If you have sensitivity and inflammation, uh, you might be needing some collagen, you might be needing some water. I've been drinking a lot more water and I have been drinking the liquid IV. So, in addition to the collagen that has vitamin C and lysine, strengthens the texture and the integrity of your skin. My personal trainer told me, Bob Barker just turned 91, and when somebody asked him what his secret was, he said he takes collagen. So, when I was in school. I learned collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. And I I had done some research because I my face had just gotten so red after I lost my gallbladder and I discovered that I was depleted in vitamin C and that if I would take lysine and vitamin C together, my skin would thicken and you wouldn't be able to see all those little red capillary veins. So now here I've got these little clips that you can use to put your hair back. Oh. So as I try to preserve my health, <clears throat> your looks go along with that to a certain extent, and then genetics plays a part as well. Layer up here. I need to color my hair and I need to continue to use the serum that I have created. It's over there for my scalp and my hair to grow. But it's natural, so it's not going to work super fast. It's going to work slow. 
this has been washed, but I need to wash it again. You can use something to put your hair away and off of your face. Men and women, you want to give yourself a deep, deep cleansing and massage. Why not? Um, men can do it too. I have given facials to men. I throw that in the laundry. So in my ventures with Venus, I was led to purchase a star, which turns out to be the star of Venus. And I was led to purchase a mirror, put it across. I'll make another video about this. And this was a symbolic gateway. So I was led to be aligned with Venus. And I began to have dreams about uh, people in relationships. I began to see where this type of information is what you hear from matchmakers. And Patty Sanger is very right. I've read her book and I've listened to her. And uh, even though she sometimes strays away from what she's been recommending, I can see where I've made my own mistakes. So I'll tell you. The young man over here that seems to be trying to get my attention, this has happened to me before, I've mentioned. This is a situation where someone doesn't want to learn how to communicate with you. And unless something changes, it's just not a good idea to be responding to someone who's not willing to speak to you and just trying to get you to come to them. This is a power dynamic where they want to have the power in the relationship. And so then they might end up being like a passive aggressive and you're constantly having to try to engage the conversation and encourage him to do things, that, that kind of a thing. Men get lonely, women get lonely. There's a lot of lonely people in the world. I get it. When I was younger, I was in my 20s, and I was just, life was an adventure to me. I was working temporary jobs as a girl Friday. I'm using this Clinique moisturizer. I love it. It's yellow, so it kind of works as a corrector. Not really, but maybe kind of, sort of. One day, as I was going to a health food store, I met a young man. We started talking. He said he needed a place to stay. I let him move in with me. It's the one and only time that I've done that. Let me tell you what happened. He said he was independent, he was self-employed, and he was trying to get back on his feet. And I don't know, there was something about him that seemed like we hit it off, and he was in the health food store. So, <clears throat> it was a short-lived arrangement. I was in a really cute little studio with a fireplace, and he was cooking and making some really delicious food. I would spend my days going to work as a girl Friday, and he would do his thing. I even let him drive my car around, take me to work, and pick me up so he could go and do his odd jobs. One of them was landscaping, he said, where he would, you know, go knock on doors and offer to pick up all kinds of sticks and branches and debris and stuff and put them in bags and then get paid for it. Sometimes he'd mow the lawn. Uh, but one day he had a check and he said he needed to go to the bank and cash it and we went to my bank he didn't have his own bank or bank account so i said okay and uh, he cashed the check or he held on to it and he said he had to go back to this lady's house i said why he said because i'm going to ask her for another check i'm like what 
I'm going to get her to, to write me another check. Why? He said, I'm going to, because I'm going to tell her I lost the check. I said, well, she's paid you good money already. So he went and he did it, and I thought, oh my God, who am I with? I'm with a criminal. I'm with a petty thief. And if you know about that kind of stuff, those are the type of things that never, ever get prosecuted. You know, it's the most common type of crime. I'm putting on a sunscreen moisturizer. I gave mine away, but I recommend you go get the Neutrogena Baby. It is 100% natural zinc oxide, and it will protect you from the sun, but you can also get a tan because it will block the burning rays. And that is what I have had to start using, uh, especially my left arm when I'm driving. It's, you know, getting freckles and it's getting more tan. You've got to put on that sunscreen. Because, you know, if you look at my chest, oh my God, what happened? I've got more freckles. And it's going to take a while for them to fade. But um, I can show you my nighttime routine later. So, I, I, at some point, had given him one of my checks, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember. It was so long ago. And leaving my checkbook home is not something that I would normally do. But somehow he got access to one of my checks when I wasn't looking. And, you know, I, I noticed and I commented, I have money missing. And then a check comes through with handwriting I don't recognize and a signature of mine that is forged. It's not my signature. And I told the bank, why did you not verify my signature? This looks nothing like my signature. But back in those days, it wasn't really that strict. So I guess I wrote him a ch I don't know, I don't remember. Okay, so my mom had given me some silver coins and I had those in a little file box one day I discovered those are missing. So I kick him out. He starts living in my storage shed that is in front of my car where I park in my parking space. And one of my neighbors told me. So I called the police. They came over and they said, well, he's not there, but there's a sleeping bag in there. If he comes back, give us a call. So I told him, if you come back, the police are going to come and get you and take you away. Oh, I also found out that he was buying and selling drugs. That was probably the last straw. Somebody told me that you're lucky that he didn't just take your car, you know, drive away, sell it or whatever. So my mom came over to help me and to be there. He was supposed to come back and get his stuff, which was in two cardboard boxes in front of my door. So, it took a while for him to come, and my mom was staying with me, and this guy was there, and I told him, you don't have to stay any longer, you know, <clears throat> you can go, I'll be all right. She said, don't answer the door. Don't tell him he's crazy. You don't want to tell a crazy person that they're crazy. And the man that was with her was telling me how I need to conduct my life, right? You deserve more than this. Don't be letting someone you don't know into your home. You know, you should be, uh, be dating someone first for a while and then have a commitment from them that they want to get engaged or to marry you. And then he said... There's more to life than sex. And I said, well, that wasn't everything. And it usually isn't with a woman. But those were some wise words. And so they left. And he came at some point later and took his stuff. Thank God that was the end of that, pretty much. And I ended up having to move. Instead of having somebody actually help me pay the bills he took from me and so 
I could no longer really afford my next month's rent and I had to start looking for another place to live. So I was using this flesh pot makeup stick and if you don't know about this don't underestimate flour liquid foundation it's like a medium to full coverage I think it's very very good I really like it so I kind of really struggled as a single lady for many years after that until I met my um, the man who would be my husband while we were working at Denny's and I was a food server. He was an older man, he seemed more mature, and he asked me to go, I think, up for a ride on his dirt bike and we went to the park so that we could just kind of talk and get to know each other. And guys, just being honest with you, I was involved in an affair with a guy that was basically just sexual. I was very attracted to him, and I knew at that point, after a few months, that I needed to be in a committed monogamous relationship because I really enjoy the intimacy. And if you know that about yourself, you should be in a monogamous relationship. Number one, you could get pregnant, you could get a bad reputation, number two. Number three, you could get a disease. Don't forget your neck. You can make faces while you are doing your makeup. This can help. Now, I'm dealing with a lot of issues with my neck. Foundation can also definitely be a way to help protect your skin from the sun, but it's not enough unless you buy a powder or a foundation that has SPF in it. Um, that's for another video. And you can put it on your arms, your hands, bathe in it, <laughs> right? And um, so and I went to the gym today, by the way, and I, I've been lifting a little bit heavier weights um, for strength. And then I had a really, <laughs> really good nap. Um, what's next? I'm not really a powder person, but I really like Jeffree Star's powder. It is translucent. And I got this at the Dollar Tree. So you can put this here while you're going to do your eye, um, eye makeup. And you can put this here to give you some contour. But I don't want to do too much. I don't really want to look too matte and too dry. When you get older, you need to look dewy. That's a secret to looking youthful, okay? And it used to be, uh, oh, no, you look greasy, right? Well, now it's called dewy. <laughs> you can buy a package of sponges, makeup sponges. Those are great. Now, one thing that helps me right now while I am losing weight is um, contour. I've got this brown contour here. Sometimes I just take my finger. Uh, some of it has spilt over here. I can get that off. And uh, it's super dark. I've even mixed it in with lotion and uh, put that on my legs for bronzer. But you don't need a lot. You just So, yeah, just struggling, poverty, many years, 
taking care of myself best as I can, working and paying my own rent uh, and, and car. A couple times I had female roommates, but I didn't like it. It seemed that drugs were always around me, especially marijuana. I didn't like it. I just didn't want any of that. I value my freedom. I don't know if it was legal or illegal at the time in California. I believe it was. And you know, come on, I just, <laughs> I don't want to be involved in that. When I'm around it, you can be arrested because you're there. You're around it. So, now, when I moved into my mobile home, there was a young man next door who wanted to get with me. He wanted my house. His mother told me. And he couldn't get it. So, he would... He and his friends would hunker down, you know, they would they would um, squat down, kneel down, and be just looking at my car, examining my car. I had a Pontiac Grand Prix, and they'd go and look at my fancy hubcaps. You know, this guy wanted my car, he wanted my house, and he kept coming into my yard. And one day, you know, I told, I asked them to quiet down their party. Every time I asked them to stay out of my yard, he never listened. He kept coming back. Uh, finally, he stopped. And so this is why, like I said, I finally had to make a binding on him and a poppet. And he turned out to be truly worse than you can imagine. He had two jobs. He got with his girlfriend. Um, his mother moved out and gave them the house for a short period of time because she gave birth. And he had two kids, she had two kids, now there's another one, there's a baby, and they had the house. I believe she had the presence of mind to start applying for housing to get an apartment for both of them. And he quit his second job. Quit his first job, then he quit his second job. Then he sold the car that he had been paying for, buying from his mother, and started driving her SUV, delivering papers. You don't make much money delivering papers. And I could tell that she was really, really tired and frustrated from all of that. But she, too, was lonely, and uh, I believe that they had known each other from high school. I had dreams about them. I was still working with the Star of Venus. And, uh, yeah, when someone is trying to get with you, and they see that you've got your own apartment, you've got your own house, you've got your own car. They're asking to drive your car. Don't do it. Okay? Don't even pay to have them added on as a driver. Unless it's a different kind of a guy who says, look, I'm going to pay. I will pay for me to be added on as a driver. I, you know, I, I need to take you to work. I need to come home. You've got a better vehicle. Whatever. Okay? Um, but this is not what was going on there. His wife had divorced him after two kids, and I'm sure that wasn't an easy decision, and he was sleeping on his mother's sofa. And so I think when they decided to come back, and they knew they were going to have to move, it took about nine months or so, they moved out. So, you know, I have another situation here with a young man who's trying to get my attention, and what I've learned over the years is that when, when someone does that, they're too, they're too insecure to learn how to talk to someone, how to talk to females in particular. You know, you could say, oh, pretty kitty cat, or what are you growing, pretty plants, something, right? There could be a situation here where somebody wants a power dynamic where they are the ones in control. And a lot of women I know, they just talk, I've, I've worked with women who just got a guy to shack up and help them pay the bills. They literally stated that. And a lot of them had a child. Things didn't work out with the first one. So, you know, now they're, they're doing it again. And... Um, It's just, I don't care if you're young or old, letting somebody move in with you 
unless it's a very, very mature man who says, look, this is temporary and I'm going to pay for everything. They start paying for everything, fine. And you can start doing whatever you want to do to contribute to your own retirement account. Now, when I decided to marry my ex, he was an older man, he was mature, and I observed his behavior at work. He was very um, careful and responsible and methodical and uh, he stated very clearly that he wanted to marry me and was asking me, do you want to marry? And we began to date. He paid for everything. And he wasn't making much money. You know, do you want to have children? When do you want to have children? All of that. So this is when someone is willing to um, express an interest in you, you know, and ask you about yourself. He was painfully shy, and he did not have a good command of the English language. But he had a, a little book, a translation book, and that's what he was using to communicate with me enough um, So yeah, he was kind of sweating and kind of shaking, but he did it. And that that's really what someone should do if they really want to get to know you. And we ended up getting a hotel room. It was like a hotel apartment together when I decided that I would marry him. Now, even though he professed undying love and all that, we had a lot of incompatibilities. So... You know, if you add that to someone you don't know and who just wants to move in with you and benefit from all that you have and not really be a giver, not really want to help you, then you could be in a situation where you're really stuck or you're getting stolen from. I like purple. I'm older, so... I'm going to put this here. And then I make the little V. Okay. Let's see. It's got to go in the bathroom sink. What else have I got here? Oh, I think everything is dirty. Um, you can take a washcloth and brush off the shadow that's on a brush and then use it for another color if it's similar. I've got this Jeffree Star Purple palette because I'm the purple girl. And I'm going to dip into Pink Magic. Now, older women can get themselves caught up in those situations as well. I've seen things on TV. Um, and they, they weasel themselves in. That's the thing. These are what you would call lazy lovers. They're wheezing themselves in their way into your life using a foot in the door technique, or they've finally gotten you somehow, some way to talk to them, right? They're looking for an escape hatch. And it's just probably not going to end well. And so, you know, women have gotten involved with people they don't know at all, or they've allowed them to move in after they've been putting their best foot forward for several months, and then they just start stealing or they're spending their money and, you know, they start acquiescing to what the man wants. And so they just end up really getting the short end of the stick. And 
we find out the hard way that a lot of times we have been raised to be passive and subservient so that we are liked and we're not um, considered too masculine, right? And it's, it's kind of a fine line. But you have to set boundaries. You have to set limits. It's difficult to say, don't get some, give someone your username and password <laughs> if they need it for some reason to access your savings account or your 401k. But you have the right to your own stuff. And my husband had a hard time with that when I got to the point that that's what I wanted to do, you know. Let's have my own retirement account. He didn't like it. He wanted me to just hand over all the money I was making. And I had made the mistake of saying, look, I'll go 50-50 so that we can have a decent life. He wasn't making much money. When I stopped, I had to sacrifice lifestyle. And the house was falling apart anyway. So, you know, it wasn't easy. But I was able to spend more time at home with my kids. Just blending this out. Now I don't know which brush I was using. Oh, here it is. You know, and uh, there was a satisfaction for me actually sacrificing and doing the hard work to stay home and be with my kids. That was my heaven. That was my joy. And. You know, I also began to study the history of money and how to use it. So I had a 401k and I made a little money from that. Where's my brush? Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Is this the right brush? I'm trying to blend this out. And, uh, it wasn't until I moved away from the marriage and took my daughter that he began to realize he was going to have to figure out how to pay for everything on his own. And that meant doing what I did, which was looking for coupons, excuse me, using coupons, looking for deals, shopping smart. Um, Yeah, being, being, being really careful. Oh, and investing in a 401k. So, you know, instead of him really understanding that if he couldn't contribute to my old age and my retirement account, then that's what I was doing for myself. Now, I've been following someone who's gotten very well known for her one of her channels where she tries to encourage women to make sure that men pay for their things. And I don't necessarily agree with everything she says, but she has a lot of really good things to say, similar to Patty Sanger, and that is, you know, if you want to be a stay-at-home mom, but he doesn't make a lot of money, Find something to do to contribute to your own retirement account. Find something to do to make some of your own little money to buy the things that you want to buy. If he's paying for the mortgage and the utilities and the car, you know, um, she prefers that. I, I don't know if her husband is really contributing to her own, but her to to her retirement account. But she does say, "Don't be a pick Misha. Don't be desperate. It will. It's just not good." And that's at any age. And I guess the same thing could apply for men. Guys, if you're watching, you want to know more about women, you know, and how to approach women. Um, my mother used to say, if you end up chasing a guy who wants you just to constantly be texting him or calling him and such, you know, well, I haven't heard from you. How come you're not calling me? 
excuse me, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the woman. You're supposed to be letting me know that you're interested. It's just nature. You could end up doing all the work in that relationship, is what my mother said. And this is pretty much what ended up happening with me. That was a culture thing, as it turned out. So, now I've got to, whoops. Someday I'll find a really good eyelash curler. I have got to curl my eyelashes. And so I'm going to go off camera and do that, and I'll be right back. So in my dreams of relationships between young men and women, I have seen women who um, unfortunately were assuming that if they have a baby, there will be more commitment. There will be more ambition. It doesn't work that way. That's backwards. I've seen it, I've dreamed it twice. The women were constantly working and trying to solve the problems and keep it together and finding out that what they thought they had loved was something else entirely. It was in their head, it was a fantasy of who this person was and he turned out to be something else, different. No ambition no respect, didn't cherish them, didn't want to work hard, didn't want to provide for them. And I've seen women buying meals for their boyfriends because they have an ex with two kids and they're paying child support, but they're desperate to be with him. Anything we do in desperation does not work well. So, after several of these astral travels and dreaming about people I was going to encounter in the future with these relationships, I took the star of Venus down. I had been led to align myself with Venus and have these dreams. But I didn't want to anymore because I was now a single mom. And I needed to focus on living my life, raising my daughter. And, you know, it was hard. I needed to get my sleep, uninterrupted sleep, and uh, go do my two jobs, you know, and run after my daughter. And I was also, at one point, somehow picking up my son, taking him to work, and picking up my daughter, then going to work, coming back from work and going to pick up my son, take him home and come back. And after a couple of weeks, I, I couldn't do it. He called me, Mom, where are you? I said, uh, I fell asleep. I, I, I can't come. <laughs> I can't move. So he said, that's okay. My boss will give me a ride home. So... This is ah, Maybelline Full and Soft. I have used a hundred mascaras in my life and the only one that I've ever found that I really like is the Maybelline Waterproof Full and Soft. It really does keep your lashes soft. Now, because of my age, I've lost the thickness and the length. So it only does so much, but hey, that's not bad. I bent the wand. You can use it this way. Or you can use it this way. And when you put your wand in the tube, don't pump it. You're going to get air in there and you're going to make it dry. Just twist it, pull it out. Okay, so the situation over here, I came home at 2.30 after going to the gym and a few minutes later he went, he finally went out, saw the notes on his windshield and 
left. He went somewhere. He has come back and parked all the way down the other end of the parking lot in front of his building. So you sometimes have to look at a situation and do what you can to make sure that you don't have somebody trying to encroach on your personal space just to get your attention, to get you to maybe come out and talk to, the, to them. Um, I had no choice but to leave a note. I wasn't going to sit there all day and wait for him to come to the truck. Um, and like I said, there's just no way after all these months he's never seen the markings on my space. Emails have been sent out. Don't park in front of someone's door. <laughs> so I enlisted the aid of management, and I am glad that I did because... You just, you just don't want to try to make somebody think that it's okay when it's already been posted, it's already been marked, your space is marked, and emails have been sent out. Um, it just didn't make any sense for him to come all the way over here when he lives way over there. So I'm not going to make an attempt to try to talk to someone who doesn't have the courage to come up to me and talk to me or even ask permission, you know, can I, can I use your space for a few minutes? I got these new lashes, which are longer. I used to have super long lashes and they were very thick and they were very full. But those days are gone. And in school, my teacher encouraged me to use false eyelashes. So what I'm going to have to do is cut the end off. Otherwise, it's just going to be hanging. And it's going to be... Yeah, it's just going to be... I have almond-shaped eyes, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> so guys... You know, don't do this with ladies. Get some information on how to talk to a woman, talk to a female. And if you hear a man talk about uh, women who need to show an interest in you, I'm telling you, as a woman, if you are looking for a committed relationship with someone. You have to spend the time to figure out how to get to know them and, you know, have some shared interests, some shared goals, and so forth. And that requires an investment of your time and your energy and your money. And if they say that the woman should be showing an interest in you, um, I would be not misunderstanding that to think that you have to wait for them to approach you or text you or call you and go 50-50 on the meal. This is really not a masculine energy. That's the truth. When I went 50-50 in my marriage with all the finances, I sort of crippled him mentally in knowing how to get out and do something extra when I was laid up in bed with my pregnancies. And only until I stopped turning over my money, like I said, did he start being really, really careful. And then after I left, he had to be even more thoughtful about saving his money and putting it in a 401k. Um, Showing a woman that you're willing to invest in your time and her time to get to know each other and pay for that meal. That's an investment you have to be willing to do, okay? And it shows her that you have masculine energy. You're not looking for a woman to help you pay for everything. I think that 
men who have more masculine pride in wanting to take care of their lady and their family, they don't do that. One woman posted a video not long ago that she had um, an arrangement in their marriage where she was working and she was helping out. And then when she had a baby, he said, you pay the hospital bill and you pay for what we have to pay right now before we can leave here. I'm not paying for it. And so that relationship ended. This is an example of how they expect you to just, you know, take care of things that they just don't want to take care of. And that's a form of greed. And that's not really um, a paternal type of a love towards the wife and the mother. Okay, so let's see. This would be way too long, way too wide. But okay, it's not too long. It's pretty. All right, so I'll probably be wearing these on my next video. Um, that's it for now. I will make another video showing you the symbology of Venus and how I was led to work with it. Uh, but whatever you align yourself with, it's what you're going to be connected to. Um, and you will receive all kinds of knowledge about that. Okay, and I've made my own mistakes, and this is why now, at my age, being a crone, if I get lonely, I get up and I find something to do. Blessed be, and I will see you later.